Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. To unfortunate circumstances. Because if you didn't know, Puggo's Pizzeria decided to make a video about me. Why, I don't know. Because <laughs> I've never interacted with this creator until now. Um, I've never even heard of his channel or watched his videos. I've never even spoken to this creator until now, besides a couple of comments they left on one of my videos. And apparently, my videos were enough for them to make an entire video just basically hating on what I make, what I do, who I am, <laughs> which again doesn't make any sense to me because you don't know me. <laughs> I don't know you. What would possess someone to make a hate video about someone they've never met before, never talked to before, is beyond me. But it is what it is, so um, I'm here to address that. And um, because for the most part, majority of what he said was wrong or misconstrued in some way, a lie, or just flat out mean. So I'm going to go through uh, each point of the video and um, I'm going to provide screenshots and everything else and, you know, give my side of the story. and why he's calling me a scammer when I have done no such thing. So to start off, I'm gonna start with the video in question. It is a video on my TikTok that basically shows off some of the more rare Five Nights at Freddy's plushies or the more expensive ones, the ones that are more hard to find. Now, Making this video was me purely just showing off pieces of my collection. Basically saying, hey, check out these plushies I have. There was no ill intent behind that video whatsoever. I don't even talk in the video. It's just music and you see some of the plushies I have. The issue, apparently, was the prices that I put on these plushies. Now, I put a range on every single plushie in that video for what I generally see them sell for. And yes, some of the prices are outrageous. I know that because I actively buy Five Nights at Freddy's merch and plushies. So I know what the prices are. I was constantly getting berated in the comments that I don't know what I'm talking about, these prices are wrong, blah 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 blah, and specifically his comment, and he states in his video that I act kind of defensive, and he failed to mention or show you that some of his followers were actually ganging up on me and asking me, oh, you don't know who Puggo is? He's the king of Five Nights at Freddy's merch. He's got this and this and this and this and this many subscribers, blah, blah, blah. How could you not know who he is? And Puggo himself being like, bro hasn't seen my collection. Bro doubled the price of each plushie. <sighs> okay, how am I not supposed to act defensive towards that? Like what you your, your followers were ganging up on me acting like i should know who you are sorry bro i have no idea who you are <laughs> i've never watched your videos i have never even heard your name until then and now you make this video about me which this plushie video was posted in january it is now april so why you waited months to do this is beyond me, but anyway, so this is the first 
interaction I had with Puggo. I figured he was just another hater because I was getting a lot of haters in that video just saying like, no, you're wrong, which I never <laughs> gave an exact price. I gave a range for most of them. And I said this comment and this basically sums up the whole idea behind why I did that is because it does not matter if the plushie is $15 at Walmart, someone is selling it on eBay or Mercari for $500 and someone buys it, then the $500 was worth it to that person. And the same exact plushie can be sold by another person. <laughs> and they see that the previous one was sold for $500. So guess what? That one sold, they can price the same exact item for the same exact price because it sells. <laughs> and I have countless screenshots of this. So here are several plushies with their prices gouged and up there so, go on all you want about <laughs> the plushy price, okay? They sell for high prices. And it is what it is. So, the fact that he is calling me a scammer in this aspect is wrong because I don't sell plushies. I don't sell any of my merch. I have never <laughs> sold any of my current plushies, especially not the rare ones. No. <laughs> so me putting a video up that literally does not say, go buy these plushies, or here's a link to buy these plushies, or you should go buy these plushies. I never said any of that. So. You're wrong. I've never scammed someone into buying a plushie. I just put a price up there for what I see them sell for. Because, again, I actively buy <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. Okay? You don't like what prices I put? Then boo freaking who. Oh well, go buy one for $10. I'm just saying people buy them for $200. It's just a fact. Sorry. So... I'm guessing that video is the reason he reached out to me and months later he sends me a DM on Instagram and says, you know, hey, just want to let you know my next video is going to be about you. And I immediately knew it was going to be a hate video. And so I said, should I be concerned? And he's like, no, no, it's not a hate video. I'm just talking about some misinformation about your mystery boxes and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't condone hate. If anybody comes after you, let me know, blah, blah, blah. Dude, your whole video is shit talking me. And you don't condone hate? It's not a hate video? You called me a scammer. <laughs> Like, I guess you don't know what a hate video is, but your entire video is a hate video. You literally say it, I have it written down, you literally say it in your video. I don't want this entire thing to be a hate video. Okay. So. Getting past that, because once they finish just talking about the plushies, and... <laughs> We go into, yeah, he says, oh, this is not what this video is about. Okay, so what is this video about? Apparently, this entire hate video is about my mystery boxes that I sell on Etsy. So I guess this is where he's calling me a scammer, even though he has never bought one of my mystery boxes and doesn't know what's in them. So therefore, I don't understand how I can be a scammer and you can claim me to be a scammer when you've never bought the box yourself. So, <clears throat> here we are. Let me go through my notes here. So 25 seconds into the video, they're like, 
don't send hate to this creator you know I don't deserve that but they spend the rest of the video shitting on my content and so saying my videos are shady uh, I'm cringe <laughs> so you know I guess hate doesn't apply to you which doesn't make any sense so um let's talk about the cringe part because that's just flat out mean do you know how many times i have been called cringe i it's just i'm over it at this point i don't care if you think some of my content is cringe i really don't because the main reason i make videos like that for instance the moon one he references in his video is a comforting type video where I am telling the watcher that everything's going to be okay but I am in my moon cosplay so here are the reasons I make videos like that so I guess you don't understand that I'll use Sun and Moon as an example, that these characters are very special to some people. They are comforting, they are their safe place, they look to these fictional characters as someone they trust over actual people. And that is completely valid. You have no room to say what makes people happy is wrong so if i can make someone happy by making a video like that then i'm going to because i myself knows what it i know what it feels like to have that comfort character i love glam rock freddy i am attached to the comforting feeling that Glamrock Freddy gives me. It's not the 8-foot animatronic, it's not his voice actor Kellen Goff, it's not any cosplay, it's just the presence that Glamrock Freddy gives in the game, that we to go superstar type attitude, always supportive, always there for you. I love that about Glamrock Freddy. So therefore, I have more of an appreciation for Glamrock Freddy. And it's the same thing with these characters, again, using Sun and Moon as an example. So you really can't say anything because that is what is keeping somebody together. And the fact that you think that is cringe really just kind of shows what kind of person you are and you know what if it makes somebody happy and it's not hurting anybody then i don't understand your problem with it just scroll ignore it you don't have to comment you don't have to watch it but for some people it may be the video that makes their day so that is all i'm gonna say on that topic so so two minutes in to his video he's like I don't want to make this a complete hate video so they sprinkle some fluff here and there saying they really like my collection and we have a similar collection almost the same amount as he does blah 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 he likes my collection videos he mentions nothing of my cosplay videos doesn't show a single cosplay video even though that's mainly what I do I do show my FNAF merch because people like seeing it, people always ask me about it, so I mix that in with the cosplay content I do. So he's like, I don't want this to be a complete hate video. He literally says it in the video when he told me in his Instagram message that it wasn't a hate video and that I had nothing to worry about. Right, okay but you say it yourself as a hate video. 
So, on to the mystery boxes. Now, he immediately says they are full of hubbubaloo and hogwash without even knowing what I include in them. <laughs> and he doesn't understand the full extent on why I make them. So he's confused on the presentation, why I add so much glitter and, and bells and ball pit balls and blood for the William Afton box and his, the cologne I spray in it and the thank you notes, like... <laughs> He even says, oh, the presentation is good, but, you know, the notes and stuff make it kind of shady. I'm like, how? The note that I put in every single mystery box is a handwritten thank you note that says, thank you for purchasing this box. I hope you enjoy what I've included and a little message from the character and then they sign it. So... <laughs> I don't understand why he was thinking there was something inappropriate or sinister about the notes. I get handwritten thank you notes in Etsy purchases all the time. It's something artistic. They always draw a little picture or include a little handwritten thank you. So it's the same thing. It's just a thank you note saying, hey, thank you for buying this box. <laughs> so I don't know he's anyway so I'm going to explain quickly what these boxes are about and then I'm going to show a little bit of what could be included in one of the boxes since you know he was so concerned about what's in the box so these boxes are not mystery FNAF merch they are not, you're gonna get a random FNAF sweatshirt or a random FNAF pop vinyl figure or nothing, okay? Sometimes I do include FNAF merch as an extra thank you to the buyer. But these boxes are from the character that they choose from the drop down menu of the character choices I had given at the time. So Sun and Moon, William Afton, Mike Schmidt, Jeremy Fitzgerald, and some of my other AUs. Because that is what all of these are from. My alternate universe versions of the FNAF characters. Now see, this goes back to where you know nothing about me. Because people who have been watching me for a while no, I have these characters, and they love these characters. They're on my channel, they're on my TikTok, they're on my Instagram. I constantly get, you know, love for these characters. So, me, as a creator, wanting to give back to my audience, I made mystery boxes inspired by these characters. And they will give you gifts themed around them so their favorite snack their favorite drink things they like things they think you might like again it is a comfort character favorite character type of thing so no it is not you're gonna get purple guy fnaf merch only no you are going to get personalized things from william afton my version of william afton a personal gift box Basically, same thing with Sun and Moon. So, for example, I include Sun Drops and Moon Drops candy in the Sun and Moon box because I feel like Sun and Moon would give you these. <laughs> um, I include ball pit balls, which he says, what are you going to do with the ball pit balls and the confetti and the glitter and stuff after you open the box, you're just going to throw it away. Well, I've had several people say that they would just want the confetti and glitter or just want the ball pit balls so they can have them to play with. So, you do you, Puggo, but some of the people just want the ball pit balls. Again, it is a comfort character thing. The concept you cannot understand, apparently. So, I include googly eyes, glitter glue, crayons, little crafts, cutesy little things that are sun and moon inspired. 
So like pens and pencils, notebooks, rainbows, candy, things if you walked into the daycare in real life that Sun and Moon would give you. Okay, so the one he mainly shows in his video is my William Afton mystery box. And he talks about how these must be selling my hotcakes because they are sold out. And yes, they are sold out. I got like 30 to 40 orders of just mystery boxes that I'm still working on. I think I have 9 or 10 left to make. And this is not the first time that they have sold out. So for my William Afton box, I include things like this. A robotic animatronic-like hand that you can put together yourself. William Afton being a robotics person, I thought this would be cool to include so you can make your own animatronic type hand. I include a unopened sealed blood type test so you can figure out your blood type. I, my version of William Afton is a sciency type guy, so you know, lab type things and blood, you know, because he's a serial killer, so something, you know, obviously if you want to, you don't have to, you don't have to do this, but it is something if you want to know your blood type and if you're not afraid of needles and you're totally cool with doing this, then okay. I also have a section in the mystery box that says, you know, if you have any allergies or you prefer not to get a certain type of items, if you don't want his cologne being sprayed on the tissue paper just so the box smells nice, then tell me and I can take those things out. It is completely up to you. So, I include test tubes, again, he's sciency. I give out these pens because their syringe and the syringe is seen in the books that he uses to inject the remnant so I thought these pens were pretty cool to include as a William Afton item. I also include some fun things, some things you can actually play with every day, some purple slime, some temporary purple hair dyes, like a little fun gift and not, you know, as serious as some of the other ones. I also include an anatomy kit. Because again, my version of William is more sciencey, so something like this to use, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not, wasn't gonna give everybody a pocket knife because you know, that's expensive and dangerous. But here's a little anatomy kit that you, you know, has scissors and other things in it and something I thought he would include. Uh, the main thing I include here are these tapes. They are a mini tape recorder, and I have a tape recorder, and I record a little message in my voice for him, which is a British accent, and I'll say again, thank you for purchasing the box, I hope you enjoy it, here's a little treat of whatever, whatever I want him to say. And then I'll record some of FNAF music, or have a creepy message, or do a phone guy call, or something, just something on the tape. Now these are, you know, more eccentric I guess because if you don't have a tape recorder then you can't listen to it but it's the incentive to get a tape recorder and something interactive that the buyer can listen to over and over again if they did want to get a tape recorder and if they didn't they could never listen to it it doesn't matter but it's there it's from him so someone who thinks William is a comfort character for them to hear his voice talk to them is the main reason behind that. So, those are the kinds of things that can be found in my mystery boxes. Um, as I said, I do include FNAF merch sometimes as extra gifts. So, as, as an extra, I'll include a mystery mini or some keychains or a plushie. If I do include a plushie, it's one of the newer ones that you can get readily available. They're only 10 to $15 depending on where you get it. 
I include things like these pins. So it's not just character theme items. I do include FNAF merch, not in every single box, but I will throw in some just as a little extra for your purchase. So on top of the handmade things, the items that are in, that's not everything, like everything I just showed you for the William, there's still stuff that I do include, and then the decorative aspect, the handwritten note, the tape, the sun and moon candy. So if you really think that these boxes are not worth it, then by all means don't buy one. But to me, they're personal. Um, I put a lot of effort into each one. I include a lot of items and I spend anywhere from 20 to $30 filling up one and I have to make some kind of return profit. So charging 60 to $65 for a box, say I make 20 to $25 in return on profit and I still have to pay for the shipping. So I'm really not making all that much off of these boxes when it comes down to minus the shipping. So, again, if you think it's not worth it, then okay. Or if you thought some of these items would be interesting, and again, they vary. Not every single one is gonna have those, and I have different things that I put in each one. They are all different. And I have other characters besides William and besides Sun and Moon, but those are my two most popular ones. Like, you mentioned some reviews in your video, and that review is actually for a Vincent box. So it is not William Afton, it's for my character, Vincent, that the people who have been watching me for years no, because he is my first character, my first cosplay that ever appeared on my channel, was inspired by Vincent, who everybody used to call Purple Guy back then. I made my own version of him. So that box is inspired by that character. So, <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Moving on. I'm just gonna show a quick thing. There has not been anything lower than four stars on my reviews on Etsy so far. So anybody who has bought something from me and it's not just the mystery boxes, it's also the earrings and the keychains and the stickers I offer. So all the reviews, there has not been anything less than four stars. So take what you will out of that. So, all right, the last point in his video, he talks about my cosplay prints and he kind of says like, mm, it's a picture of yourself, that's kind of weird, <laughs> which I guess you don't know what a cosplayer is because, you know, cosplay and photography is art. And what do artists do? They sell prints of their work. So cosplayers will have a Patreon or an OnlyFans or another subscription type service where people can buy prints of their cosplays. And guess what? It's them in the photos. So it's completely normal in the cosplay community for people to sell prints. I see it all the time. And I don't have an OnlyFans or a Patreon, so this is how I do it. If someone had a favorite character of mine and they wanted a picture of them up on their wall, it's not just a photo that I send out in an envelope. I frame it and autograph it. From the character. Again, it's a personalized comfort thing, favorite character gift, if you will. So, <laughs> I just, I don't understand where your logic comes from that these items are not 
plausible because they full on exist and it's not like it's abnormal because when I met Kellen Goff, he's a voice actor so it's a little different but he still does creative type things. He had prints for sale on his table and you could buy the print and he would autograph it. It is the same thing. <laughs> so I don't understand where you're coming from. And this right here was like 70 ish, 60, 70 ish dollars because I had it authenticated. But like 30 to 40 bucks for a print is not unusual. So me charging 25 for a framed picture of one of my cosplays is not unreasonable. Plus it's autographed. So I don't I don't understand. So they end the video basically saying again, no, oh, don't go send hate to this creator even though immediately after this video going up, I got some hate comments saying that Puggo is better than me and I will never be as good as Puggo and yada yada yada, this is a scam, scammer, scammer, you know, people in his comments on his video saying I've been exposed, that I'm dramatic, I'm just trying to flex, whatever you want to call it, it's just exposing me for what? I didn't scam anybody, so calling me a scammer is a lie, a false claim, doesn't make any sense, so I just, I don't understand, and I don't know how you can make the claim to call me a scammer when you have not bought a mystery box for yourself. And he says at the end of the video that maybe he will buy one so he can open it up on his channel. And I'm assuming you would just derail me further and drag my Etsy store through the dirt. So um, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna restock them. Maybe I'll do a couple at a time. Just, I don't know. I really don't because you just dragged my Etsy store through the dirt for no reason. And I don't appreciate that. And you had no grounds to do so. No evidence. At all. Because you hadn't even bought any of my products. So, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. <laughs> like, why? I've never met you, I've never talked to you, I've never interacted with you, I didn't even know you existed, and then all of a sudden, you just do this. So, I think that's basically everything I wanted to say. I responded to most of the points he said in his video, and I just wanted to bring light to my side of the story, and prove that I am not a scammer and I am not selling anybody any plushies and I am in fact you know just a regular content creator like you who likes Five Nights at Freddy's so I hope from this point forward we can just drop it and move on again I really didn't appreciate the fact that you did this because you just plopped a plate of drama into my lap that I really didn't need in my life right now and I really didn't want to make a video like this because quite frankly I've never had to make a video like this so thank you Puggo for being the first person to make a hate video about me and post it on the internet when it's a complete lie so I hope those of you who are watching this from Puggo's channel that you understand me better as a content creator and know that I am not a scammer. I would never scam somebody and you are more than welcome to buy a mystery box or not.
depends on if I want to restock them because I really don't want to give you the chance to drag my Etsy store through the dirt even more. So I'm going to end this video here and uh, hopefully the next thing I post on this channel because I do so sparingly, I mostly post on my TikTok, it won't be something like this. So Puggo, no hard feelings, I'm really not even that mad, I'm just more disappointed that somebody would do this because I don't know why you would, but it is what it is, and honestly I could if I wanted to report you for harassment or defamation or, you know, something along those lines, you use my face in your thumbnail and you use my content in your video. So in fact, I could claim and report you and I just want you to be aware that what you're doing is not okay and I hope you don't do this to any other creators because we all are in the community, we all love Five Nights at Freddy's so we should all get along so now that the air is clear i just want to leave it there so hopefully nothing further comes of this thanks for watching